So Lisa, we've worked together for quite a long time. Very long time. And one of the things that I always remember uh, that you said about me once was that I gave you permission to kill people. You did. Okay, so absolutely. I was wondering about that. Yes, it was when I took you around uh, my communal garden where I live in London. Yeah. And I said I had this idea, uh, but it sounded a bit dark for my readers about something awful happening to a teenager in a communal garden based on mine. And you just said, do it. <laughs> <laughs> there was no compunction at all about whether my readers would be up for it or not. Yeah, you totally gave me permission. And I would also say that over the years, your books have been getting a bit darker. And that you, you started off when you were writing um, what I would call relationship fiction. And yeah. those relationships were good. Um, but, li but bit by bit, these relationships have been getting more darker. Twisted. More, yeah, toxic. Toxic, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, don't, I wouldn't say they're getting darker and darker on a trajectory into the sort of no. habits of hell. Yeah. Um, they do sort of jump around a bit. So, for example, The Night She Disappeared, I don't think it's nearly as dark as none of this is true. Yes. Um, but they are very much, I'm now firmly in that camp now, just, I'm digging as dark, deep and dark mm. into the evil psyche as I can get. And I've always felt the psychological suspense in the old days when you were crime, there would be, the danger would be outside, but yes. psychological, with yes. psychological suspense, the danger is inside, yes. in the home, yes. very close. And for me, it's about that, that fear, I think, lives within all of us, particularly one, those of us who are living very nice, happy, safe lives of letting the wrong person in or making that one bad decision or letting the wrong person into your life, which is what none of this is true. Exactly. That really was that the starting point. Us. So I was going to ask you about that. What was the word, what was your jumping off point? Well, there were a couple of things. There was a, as is my want, there was a man I saw through a window who, for some reason, just got my imagination into overdrive. I decided that this man I'd seen through a window had some dark secret in the flat behind him and that there was somebody behind a bedroom door and I wanted to know what that person was doing. But in terms of letting the wrong person in, it was um, at moments I had during the project I undertook the year before, writing the book mm -hmm. with um, Will Brooker, who yes. wrote the book The Truth About Lisa yeah. Jewell. Um, and I didn't know from Adam at the beginning of the project and I had to make a lot of judgment calls based on my instincts about whether I should mm -hmm. allow him that sort of insight into my processes mm -hmm. and into my personal mm -hmm. life. Yes. Um, and I had a few cold feet moments of thinking, mm -hmm. what if this is a really bad mistake? What if it's got bad intentions? Mm -hmm. What if he has arrived in my life to derail it completely in some way? Gosh. And that was kind of the starting yes. point yeah. for none of this is true, is somebody living their best life somebody arrives and they make that bad decision to let them in too, too much. And is there, a, is, there, is there a scene that you think exemplifies that in None of This True or is your favourite scene in None of This Is True? Oh, I think it has to be. Um, and I do remember editing this scene with you to ratchet it up mm. when they're outside the, um, the school. And Josie has engineered a meeting because she's worked out that Alex's children go to the same school that hers did. And and it was just so achingly uncomfortable because it was that moment of, of Alex wanting to be polite mm -hmm. yes. and not wanting to yes. offend yeah. um, or have Josie think that she wasn't a nice person or a good person. And I think that's so true of so many of yes. us. We yes. make decisions based on the other people's feelings. Uh, so that was a huge moment because mm -hmm. she said yes. That was the moment when she said yes. All the moments that came after that, I think, were harder for, for uh, Alex to control. Mm -hmm. I think that was the last time she really had any control over the situation and she blew yeah, it. And she blew it, yeah. So now this is, I mean, so many people have said this is your best book. Mm -hmm. And there have been amazing responses on NetGalley. Um, how, do you, how do you feel about that? It's, it's weird, because this is the second time this has happened with one of my books. The last time was then she was gone which again, when I was writing, I thought, this is a really weird book. This is gonna polarize my readers. I think a lot of them won't like it or get it. And I was completely wrong about that because that was an incredibly popular read and engendered a really popular response in the readers. And I felt the same way writing this book. I thought, what am I doing here? I think loads of my readers are gonna hate this. Um, so when you start getting the trickle yes. down from, you know, from NetGalley and from early readers and what have you, and it's overwhelmingly positive, from my traditional readers and new readers. Um, yeah, makes me wonder about my <laughs> readers, actually. Yeah, I mean, they can clearly take a lot of darkness. Um, but yeah, just such a relief and so exciting. 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 It's yeah, just yeah. so exciting. Yes. I cannot wait now for it to be out there on, in bookshops and people for actually be able to, everybody to be able to pick it up and read it. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you very much.